we're going to talk about measuring pressure. Now, a long time ago, they used to have something called a barometer that was at, and they still do, obviously, to measure pressure. But a long time ago, there was a thing called a barometer. It was just a glass tube about this high uh, with a hole in it, and it was basically put in a big thing of mercury. And they would physically measure how high the mercury went up in the tube to measure the pressure of the air. Now, they don't do it anymore like that. They have much more advanced techniques. You know, that. What? Yeah, kind of something like that. Now, the way we're the way we're still going to look at it, though, we're going to look at this old school barometer, and we're going to use it to measure atmospheric pressure. Now, this part is pretty simple, in that the height of the barometer is the atmospheric pressure, or in this case, the height of the mercury in our little tube is the atmospheric pressure. So that's pretty simple. So, let's just take a look at uh, at number one here. And by that, I'm basically, we're going to look at these four pictures. These are our four major things that we're using right now. And I would like you to write up here for a barometer. Okay. For a barometer, that atmospheric pressure. Barometer. Sorry, I put a random space in there. Atmospheric pressure is equal to the height of. the millimeters of mercury. So please write that down. That's the first thing you're going to have to remember. Because there is a test question where I give you a barometer. It looks just like this thing. And I say, what is the atmospheric pressure here? It's an easy test question. It's probably the easiest one on there, actually. And you just have to be able to remember well, it's just the height of the mercury. Now, the only thing that you might have to deal with that might be a little challenging is this. If you look, what does number one want the answer in here? What unit does it want it in? KPA. What is our what is our actual height given in though? Millimeters of mercury, right? So we have to do a simple conversion here. The only work you have to do for this one, you gotta basically convert seven hundred and fifty millimeters of mercury. To no, just as directly to KPA. Now these are conversions. Remember, I'm giving these conversions to you on the test in terms of you know what's equal to what. You just have to remember how to do it. So you do this. This will be equal to your atmospheric pressure in KPA. Does anybody know what that is off the top of their head? Anybody do it? Kilometers per inch. <laughs> yeah, 101.325. That's again, that's given to you on that sheet with all the equations and information. Oh, so like you just put 1 ATM and then 101.375. So you can give us the constant. Yes. 84.75 Thanks, Adib. Yeah. Wait, what's the 101.2? That's those conversions. It's the constant conversions that we use to convert between pressures. Remember, I give it to you on the sheet that gives you all the information. It's what we did like the first day. So we use that number for everything? Depends, but you'll have to figure out what the units are to determine whether you're going to use it or not. So now, KPA, we use that number, right? yeah, yes. So that's number one. That's num number one, the barometers. Those are simple. I mean, those are as easy as it gets. The next thing, though, you see these other three? Obviously, they don't look like the barometer. They are instead called manometers. So let's write this down. Sorry. So manometers. Now, this requires a little bit of actually thinking and looking and interpreting what the picture means. Now, in general, if we have a manometer, here's sort of the deal. Now, I'm not going to bother drawing it out. We'll just look down here. Now, the way it works, a manometer allows us to compare the pressure of a gas in a, you know, a flask or a cylinder or something, a contained gas, and the pressure of the atmosphere. So atmospheric pressure is pushing down, the confined gas is pushing out. 
it allows us to compare and see which one has a greater pressure. Obviously, the one with the greater pressure will be pushing the mercury further than the other one. It'll sort of win in the, in the fight. So, according to that, looking at B here, which you know goes to number two, which one is bigger? The pressure of the confined gas or the atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric. That's winning? No. Oh, it goes down to three? Yeah. Thanks for yelling out before we even thought about what I asked, by the way. Appreciate that. What it, here's what this is saying. This mercury can fluctuate. It can go, it can be this way. It can move back the other way. It depends entirely on like, you got basically got something pushing down here and something pushing down here. Whichever one of these pushes harder makes it so that the mercury is lower. It's kind of like a seesaw. You know, whichever one's heavier, it wins. Okay? So in this case, the confined gas is force. Like if you want me to draw a really big arrow, it's pushing down really hard. Atmospheric pressure is only pushing down a, a little bit less. So, Isam, what was your question? There's, there's no if in here? What do you mean if there's no pressure? No, because it's it's pushing out from inside the cylinder. Oh, I so it's coming out from inside the cylinder. Oh. So right now, which pressure is bigger? Can you recognize the confined gas has a greater pressure here? It's pushing this mercury down further. Because the pressure, it's like you got to imagine inside the cylinder there's gas. It's exerting pressure in this little tube on the mercury. Okay, it's pushing on. Atmospheric pressure is pushing on it. Now, obviously it's going to move, you know, they're not going to be at the same force. If they were equal, then the levels would be equal. But which, whichever one sort of pushes harder is going to force it down. Is that so, okay, so because the confined gas can push hard, like, down harder, then the atmospheric pressure is more? Is no, it's, it's less. That's the point. It's weaker. It's less. The pressure is less. see that in the graph, but I don't get it. Yeah, and that's the point, is that it's not as strong. It's not pushing as hard down. Oh, because if it's smaller, it's more compact. Yes. So, here's the deal. If the pressure of the confined gas, and let me, let me write it like this. So, confined gas is greater So I'd recommend you write this down because, again, this is a test question and you will literally fail it if you don't write this down properly. So confined gas is greater than atmospheric pressure. This is the equation you use. The pressure of the confined gas is equal to atmospheric pressure plus Stop talking. So the pressure of the confined gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the height difference in the mercury columns. This is, again, if the confined gas is bigger or has more pressure than the atmospheric pressure. Plus the height difference, H difference. Now this again might seem complicated, it's not. All you've got to do now is look, it's actually, truthfully, this part's really simple now. So we're using this one, so we know that the pressure of the confined gas is equal to atmospheric pressure plus the height difference. So pressure gas is equal to, what is atmospheric pressure here? Yep. Now, what is the difference in height here? 600 minus 200. Obviously, that's 400 millimeters of mercury. However, do you notice an issue? Yeah. What's the issue? Uh, yeah, the units, kPa and millimeters of mercury, are, they do not go together. Now, what does problem two actually want? Conversion 
Problem two says what? It wants pressure in KPA. So we have to convert this to KPA. We had to convert 400 millimeters of mercury to KPA. So all you got to do again, just 400. What does it come out to be, Adib? 45.2. 45.2? So you get 45.2 KPA. Now, all this ends up being is then 101.3 KPA plus 45.2 KPA, which is equal to the pressure of your gas. That comes out to be what? What is it, Adib? Oh God, I couldn't hear you because Risk interrupted him right as he was saying. Who's saying? Stop speaking. I've asked you nicely like three or four times. I'm not going to ask nicely. Seriously, Adib, what is it again? Thank you. Okay, where did the 760 come from? This is the conversion. 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere is equal to 101.325 kPa. It's this conversions we've been using since the start. They're in your notes. At least they should be. So, uh, wh what? So we're always going to give you the atmospheric pressure? Not always. No, you might have to figure it out, which I'll show you. Now, just to, just to go back, notice the, the confined gas is 146.5 kPa. So inside here is 146.5. Atmospheric pressure is only 101. That's why this is forcing it down greater than the atmospheric pressure. That's why this confined gas is pushing it down further. Does that make sense once you see the numbers compared then too? Okay. What? Would always, um, the combined gas, would it always have greater pressure than the atmospheric pressure? Nope. So, so if atmospheric pressure, now we got to do this one. This is a little bit different. So if atmospheric pressure, I'll write it on here for you. If atmospheric pressure is greater than the confined gas. So this is the other example that we can do, and it's a different formula. So this is the part where you got to figure it out. Once you figure it out, it's pretty easy to add stuff up. What you've got to do, though, if atmospheric pressure is greater than the confined gas, uh, and an example of that would be right here. You see how in this case atmospheric pressure is pushing down far more than the confined gas for C here? In this case, okay, in this case our formula is reversed. The pressure of the gas, of the confined gas, is equal to atmospheric pressure minus the height difference. Instead of adding it, you're subtracting it. That's the only difference. Wait, these are all in one problem? No. So, ATM pressure greater than confined gas, does that have to do anything with the equation? You have to look at the picture of it. Yeah. If it if yes, so. if, the, if the pressure of the atmosphere in the manometer shows that the atmospheric pressure is greater, you use that equation. Okay? That's, that's the whole point. So if we look at the manometer and see, obviously, which thing is bigger, atmospheric pressure or the confined gas? Confined gas. The confined gas is stronger. What's the difference in height here? Do you know? What's 325 minus 150? 175. So to plug this in and to make sure we're kind of all okay here, atmospheric pressure is equal to 100.4 kPa. All right. You're going to be subtracting the height difference, which we established, you know, 325 minus 150 is equal to 175. Now, the only thing we have to do again 
is convert millimeters of mercury to kPa. That's the one thing we have to do again. So to do that, just remember, you know, same as before, 175. So that's what it is? Let's just go with 19.8. Yep. <laughs> What's it come out to be? So that's how you do it. Again, it's not exactly the hardest thing in the world. I know this is pretty simple, you know, operations to do. The whole point is that you just are able to figure out and determine which manometer yeah, or which gas in the manometer has a greater pressure, the atmospheric pressure or the confined gas. And you'll have to determine that based on the way it looks.